times closed economy. Closed economy was basically, again, uh, given available resources, the, the economy or country produced products X and Y, and then ultimately had to just consume what they produced. So with open economy, what we have in mind is something like uh, there are some, um, there's uh, international markets. that the economy, the country we're looking at, which we'll model again, uh, but it's built the same way uh, that we looked at on uh, Wednesday, has access to these international markets where they're able to trade. Uh, we assume these sort of, these international markets are sort of large in scale, big, deep markets where the individual country we're looking at um, is sort of just a, a small player in a wider um, market and does not have market power or the ability to influence price. So the idea is that if we have these two types of consumption goods, again, which we will in the model, uh, in the international market, these two goods, X and Y, trade at some international prices, PX and PY. And these are um, sort of uh, fixed, at least from the point of view of the individual country we're looking at. So the country can produce products, um, X and Y, right? So I can produce some products, X, maybe call for production, Y production. And then I can sell these in the international markets. Uh, what that does is then generate some sort of uh, um, revenue. So hard currency, dollars that I can then use to sort of, so to speak, return to the international markets and given the revenue I have that I just generated from exporting all the products, something like that, um, I can, again, pick out a basket in the market, call it X, C, Y, C for consumption, um, which, I'm, which I'm going to buy. The idea is access to the international markets don't force me to, uh, what is it, consume exactly what I produce. The two can be different. And what you can show fairly easily, right, using the model setup that we uh, looked at, is that you can definitely get gain some trade here. So one way to think about it is in the closed economy, uh, the country had to pick a basket ultimately for consumption that was on the PPF. Anything else was uh, not feasible. What we'll be able to show here is that once you have access to the international markets, effectively what's going to be happening is you're able to um, lift yourself off that PPF and pick a basket for consumption that otherwise would not be feasible. So that generates some sort of gains that uh, make you better off than in a context where you did not participate in the international markets and you simply kept the economy closed. All right, so here we go. <laughs> so let's look at a, um, a setup similar to what we did on Wednesday. So I'm gonna do a, um, an economy here. And it has all the same ingredients. Um, so I'm gonna have uh, two types of goods. I'm gonna have a labor endowment. I'm gonna pick a number again. So let's make that 120 units. <laughs> and then, uh, Let's say that I have a production functions um, to produce goods X and Y. So for my production functions, let's say I have X, maybe five LX to the one half. And then I have some separate production function for good Y. So maybe like uh, two LY to the one half. And then, uh, the economy here for preferences over baskets for consumption, uh, we have some sort of utility function. So let's just make that say uh, X times Y. So a simple Cobb-Douglas utility function. So 
what we'll do is then assume what's different from last time is that you uh, you have the economy participate in these international markets where they can trade these goods X and Y that they produce using the resource of in. Before we do that, though, let's just sort of establish a benchmark or a baseline. And we can solve this with um, the, the closed and see where the economy winds up. And then what I'll do is do an open economy and we can compare the two. All right, so for the closed economy, um, what I'm looking at here, right, is a scenario like this where I'm going to generate a PPF and it's going to be sort of nonlinear like this. And we looked at one of these on Wednesday. And then um, you can graph in this utility function, which is Cobb Douglas. And so you have uh, some indifference curve like this. And so the basket we're hunting for here is this one here. Um, on the PPF, right? So it's all going to be on the PPF on this and basically maximizing the utility function. All right. So the optimization problem is maximize the utility function subject to being on that PPF. So let's do the PPF first, right? So if I take that production function uh, for good X first, and I'm going to rewrite it here and then now solve for labor in terms of X like we did before. So LX one half equals one fifth times X or LX by square both sides would be 125 over X squared. I'll do the same thing for good Y. So Y would be two LY to one half. And then I'll solve that one for labor in terms of Y. So this could be LY one half equals one half it times y. And then again, if I square both sides, I have ly equals one fourth times y squared. All right, and then my resource constraint uh, will be that anytime I pick a, a labor allocation, which would be a lx and ly value, those will always sum to l bar, which in this case we've set at 120. Right, so if I plug that in, I have 1 over 25 times x squared plus 1 over 4 times y squared equals 120. All right, so that'll be my uh, my PPF. <laughs> Let me, um, sometimes it's easier to work with this if I um, multiply through the PPF by a constant just so I don't have any uh, fractions, less likely to make a mistake. So for example, if I take this and, so for a common denominator for uh, 25 and four, we could do, uh, I guess 100 would work, right? So let's do that. So if I multiply through by a constant, left side and right side, 100, just to cancel my denominators, um, I can rewrite this thing. So uh, 100 divided by 25 is four. And then 100 divided by four is uh, 25, right? Sure, I don't make any mistakes uh, early in the process and corrupt the rest of the video. So I'm gonna take my time. So, and then 120 times 100, we have a couple more zeros. All right, so I'm going to write the PPF like that, just easier for me to work with. But you could use either one. All right, so that's the PPF there. Um, the, the slope of this thing you can calculate. Um, I, we, I didn't do that last time. When it's nonlinear, like if you do need the slope, what you can do is totally differentiate this. So if I take the partial with respect to x, I have 8x, right? And then multiply that by dx, and then take the partial with respect to y, and you get 50y dy. And then this is just d of the constant. So I'm taking the derivative of this, which would be 0. So I set that equal to 0. And so I have 8x dx plus 50y dy. 
And for the slope, what I want is dy over dx um, for a rise over run. So if I solve for this, I think what I'm going to get is uh, dy over dx. So bring this over on this side. So you have minus 8x and then divide by 50y. And then if I just put that in decimal, so it's in front of me, 8 divided by 50 is what? 0.16. Okay, so that's my um, measure of the slope of the PPF. Um, so depending on where I am on the PPF, uh, the slope will vary. So you pick the coordinate point X and Y, and uh, you can <laughs> calculate that. Notice um, with that slope, I think we called this last time my rate of product transformation. Usually they just take the absolute value uh, once you assign an RPT, so it becomes something like 0.16 X over Y. Um, notice with this slope right here, right? If you look at the, the slope here at the horizontal intercept, at this horizontal intercept right here, you have a positive X value and Y would be zero. So if you plug that in, when you put a zero in the denominator, of course, uh, that causes problems. All you have is you have a positive number over zero. So what that is going to give you is uh, infinity. So you get a vertical straight tangency line at the horizontal intercept. Um, when x is zero and y is positive at that other vertical intercept, in that case, uh, when I set x equal to zero at the coordinate point, um, zero here will just make this slope zero. So you get a, a horizontal, perfectly horizontal tangent line there, right? So what that does is guarantee me an interior solution for this Cobb-Douglas indifference curve. Um, for the Cobb-Douglas indifference curve, you can just take the marginal rate of substitution. And the marginal rate of substitution is just going to be... Um, for this Cobb Douglas, uh, margin utility X over margin utility Y. So the partial of the utility function with respect to X is Y, and the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to Y would be X. So um, you can see at the optimal <laughs> basket here, when you have the closed economy, at least. Uh, what I'm looking for is a point on that PPF that is going to make the, the rate of product transformation, the slope of the PPF, equal to the slope of the indifference curve. So to solve uh, this, right, I set my <coughs> RPT equal to the marginal rate of substitution. And then also I'm gonna make sure I'm on the PPF. So I'm gonna use this right here. Or X squared plus 25 Y squared, it's got equal 12,000. All right, so I should be able to solve this now, uh, sort of two equations, two unknowns. <laughs> um, so how about I take one here? I could rewrite that as uh, 0.16 x squared equals y squared. So let me set that right in here. So I could rewrite two as four x squared plus 25 times y squared. And I know that y squared itself, y squared is equal to 0.16 x squared. I can just write it like that. All right, and then on the left side there, let's collect the terms. So 25 times 0.16 gives me four, right? And then plus four, eight. So if I did that right, I got eight X squared equals 12,000. Um, and then if I solve for X, right? So I'll divide that by eight and then take the square root. So 12,000. Divided by eight, it's 1,500. And then if I take the square root of that, I have 
And then for Y, um, I think I could use this right here, right? <coughs> so Y is going to be the square root of 0.16 X squared, or square root of 0.16 times, times X, right? So if I take this here and multiply that by the square root, 0.16. Four times this. And I'm getting 15.5 for rounding. So something like this. So this would be my um my closed economy. So just a real quick picture. So here's my PPF. And so the PPF was 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 12,000. All right, and just for the picture, let me find these intercepts here. So for example, the x-intercept would be 12,000 divided by 4, and then you take the square root. So I'm getting 50. Put that in like so 54.8. And the y intercept here should be 12,000 divided by 25. I'm going to take the square root of that 21.9. <laughs> and then so here's my here's my basket here. So let's just plot this basket. So x is 38. All right, 38.7, and then y is 15.3. All right, so that was my solution to the closed economy. And then, of course, you have a difference curve like this. The utility here you can calculate, right? How well are we doing? Uh, the utility should just be, we're using this function right here. So just a straightforward Cobb Douglas. So if I take the X units, multiply by the Y units, that gives me my utility. So I'm just gonna multiply these two together. So you have 38.7 times 15.3, 592. All right, so that's my difference curve. Uh, that I land on um, in the closed economy. All right, so that was your close. So now let's look at uh, the open economy version of this. <laughs> and so what we'll do for the open economy version of this is uh, pick some prices and for PX and PY and sort of reanalyze this. So let me um, let me get a fresh slide here. Check one thing. <laughs> I'm going to make up some prices, make up some good ones. Okay. So I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to do the same, same economy that we had here. And what we'll do is we'll just, uh, so we'll use all these same ingredients. We already have the PPF for this, right? So what we have is this open economy now. We have the PPF, uh, so we don't need to redo that. I'll just write that down real quick. So that's this here. It's gonna be four X squared uh, plus 25 Y squared equals 12,000. And then what we'll do is we have a new, <laughs> We have new uh, prices, or we have prices. So for the open economy, we have a, a set of prices that are fixed. So I have a PX and I have a PY. All right, and so let me make, uh, I'll just make up some prices, like maybe this is $4 and this is $2. Right, so that'll be my uh, international prices. I can pick anything I want, right? So I just randomly pick some prices. 
and we can change those. But what I'm curious about is um, uh, what is the the choices uh, now by this economy um, under the case where they can participate in the international market. So to do that, what we do is there's a, there's two steps that I was sort of alluding to at the beginning of lecture. Um, and you want to sort of look at these independently. So the first step is to uh, analyze the production decision. So we can kind of keep production and consumption entirely separate this time. <laughs> so what we'll do under production is figure out what products to produce, X and Y, in order to then sell at the international prices to make as much money as possible. That'll generate revenue, which creates a budget for us, which then we can take that money, the cash, and that allows us to go back into the market and uh, figure out exactly which basket uh, we should pick for consumption to maximize utility. So we use the same utility function as before. All right, so let's do production first. So production, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, an X and Y. So this is X, P, Y, P. I'm not going to add that in every time, just the same time. So we're in the production phase here, right? So I'm picking this for production. And what I'm going to do is then I'm going to sell this um, in the international markets, and that's going to allow me to make some sort of revenue. So call it like a total revenue of uh, PX times X plus PY times Y. And that's what I'm trying to maximize. So I'm trying to maximize that revenue I generate from this domestic production in the economy. Uh, my constraint is that um, given my resource constraint and the production functions, of course, you're going to have to just pick a point on the PPF. So the constraint I can write down, just write down the PPF like this. All right, so what I'm trying to do is maximize the revenue that I get from producing X and Y. And the constraint is I have to pick a point on the PPF. All right, so to solve this, we can turn to our good friend, Lagrange. So my Lagrange function, I have a objective function is PX times X. I'm just gonna use the prices right away. So I have PX is four and PY is two, right? So that'll be my revenue. And then my constraint here is gonna be the PPF. So there's my parameter, and then I have 12,000 minus 4X squared minus 25 one squared. <laughs> okay, so uh, convert that into the Lagrange, take my partials. So let's take the partial, sorry, take the partial with respect to X first. And then I'll set that equal to zero. So I have four. <coughs> I have four. Then I have minus. Uh, what do I have? Minus lambda. Bring the two down. So eight x. Set that equal to zero. All right. When I take the partial respect to y, um, I have two minus lambda. And I'm taking partial of this, so it's going to be 50, right? Times y, so that equals zero. And then the partial respect to lambda would be just the PPF. Minus 25 y squared, let's set that equals zero. All right, so those are my first order conditions. So like we did before, uh, earlier versions of similar problem, we get rid of my lambda. So I can rearrange these two and then divide the first one by the second one. And that'll cancel lambda on the right side. So if I do that, I'll have four over two equals, then the lambda cancels and I have eight X over 51. Right, or I can rewrite this as, this is just two, and then eight divided by 50, <laughs> we did that before, 0 0.16, 0 0.16 x over y. 
Okay, so uh, again, recall this, this, we looked at this before, right? This was just that uh, rate of product transformation that we derived. Somewhere here, there it was, right? So we took that PPF, totally differentiated it, and this is the RPT. All right, so it's exactly what I get here out of these first order conditions. So I'm setting the RPT, so the economics here, equal to these um, international price ratios, right? So this is just PX over PY, four over two. And that's what I'm using to identify my, <laughs> my critical point. Um, so you can rewrite this, right, um, as 2Y equals 0.16X. Or let me just solve for Y. So 0.16 divided by 2, 0 0.08 times X. All right. That looks good. And then I'm going to sub that into the PPF. So the PPF is 12,000 equals 4x squared plus 25y squared. And so I'll substitute this in. So that's my PPF. Eliminated y. And then 25 times 0 0.08. Two. So this times this is two, and I'll add that to four, which gives me six x squared. So I can take 12,000 divided by six. <laughs> gives me 2,000, and then take the square root of that, which is 44.7, and then I can solve for y. So y is going to be 0 0.08 times that, right? So this would be 3.57, all right? So this is my optimal production decision. Uh, you can calculate your revenue earned, of course, right? How much money are we talking about? So I can take the price of X, which is four, and I sell off 44.7 units. Take Y, and I sell that at the price for Y, which was two. Is that right? Sell those at $2 a unit, and you have 3.57. All right, so we're looking at the grand total of One hundred and eighty-five dollars and ninety-five cents. All right, so that's my uh, a revenue earned. To see how that looks, right? Like, let's look at this closed economy picture or benchmark somewhere here. This. All right, so let's look at the production decision in the open economy in comparison to this here, right? So what I'll do is just right below this, while we're staring at that, I can look at the um, open economy version. So in the open economy version, what happens is you have a X, Y like this, and you have the same PPF, right? So that's the same PPF. 54.8 and 15.3. This was the point for um, consumption in the closed economy, right? And what I'm doing now, and this was 38.7, what I'm doing now in production though is slightly different, right? So for production, I have this 44.7. So somewhere out here, right? 
tax P equals 44.7. And then my Y production right there would be the 3.57. And do this exactly the scale that you can see I've adjusted um, in the open economy by sort of um, decreasing the amount of Y I'm gonna produce, increasing the amount of X I'm gonna produce. Uh, what I've done here is, in terms of some of the economics is there's a, um, a revenue of generating like this, right? Where I take the goods I produce and multiply them by the, the international prices. So you have PX is four times XP and PY is two times YP. And that's generated my revenue. Uh, this generates some sort of revenue. Um, you can calculate what sometimes they call an ISO revenue line. It sort of looks like a budget line um, where I collect all the other XY combinations that would generate the same revenue, which was 185.95. So it's like sort of like a budget line. This is linear clearly. So if you graph it the way it looks, is you get a tangency like this, like this. And this equation right here is this ISO revenue line. So 4x plus 2y equals 185.95. All right, and so what I've done when I solve this problem Uh, let me just find where it is here, I guess. So here's where we solved that. Um, what you what we did here is we set the rate of product transformation at 0.16 times x over y. So we found a point on the PPF, moving up and down the PPF by picking an x and y point so that we equated that with that price ratio px over py which is the slope of the blue line, right? So the slope of this, this right here has a slope of PX over PY or four over two. All right, so at that point, we equated the slope of the ISO revenue line with the slope of the PPF and we're maximizing revenue um, at this point here. There's other ISO revenue lines, right? They sort of look like this. This one is parallel to this, but just has a lower revenue figure, like 173 or something like that. And there's ones out here we can't get onto. These are even higher than 185, right? So all these are parallel, have the same slope, PX over PY. So graphically, what I'm trying to do here is pick a point on the PPF that puts me on the highest ISO revenue line. It's another way to go about it. Um, you can use Lagrange too, you get the same thing. So either way, you're getting the same answer. All right, so that brings me to the second part of this, which is now to move to the consumption phase, right? So the two steps. So we have the production phase complete, and now I wanna do consumption in the open economy. So I'm still in my open economy. And now what we're looking at is consumption. So I'm looking for that X, C, Y, C. <coughs> All right, so um, what's happening here? So we have a budget, right, that we're going to work with. Uh, the budget's gonna be defined by the, the prices we face and the, and the revenue figure we have. So the revenue figure we have sort of like an income from consumer theory is 185.95. That's how much money we generated from production. So my budget line then is just gonna be PX times X plus PY times Y. This right here is just the cost of a basket that I pick out in the international markets. And that cannot exceed this, this revenue that I've raised. All right, so I have to be able to afford it. 
And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to pick a basket in order to maximize my utility function. Okay, so if we put all that together, what I'm doing here for the consumption phase is I'm choosing a, a basket to maximize the utility um, subject to the basket being affordable. So four times XC plus two times YC uh, needs to equal 185.95. All right, this sort of looks like a budget line, kind of is, right? Um, what I'm doing here is <laughs> just uh, ignoring production and looking for um, this consumption basket that sort of we pick out after production's complete, right? So produce the products, sold them in the international markets, raise the money. Now we return to the international markets with the big fat purse, and I'm gonna pick out a basket. All right, so what I wanna do is solve this problem. This is actually fairly straightforward because this is just Cobb Douglas. This is just kind of like a budget line, right? So you can use Lagrange on this, but um, what, you're, what you're doing in terms of a picture, right, is just like this. You have a budget line. So this is my 4X plus 2Y equals 185. And then you have uh, some indifference curve like this, right? Try to find the highest indifference curve I can, <laughs> and that'll occur where I have this tangency here, right? So that's how I'm gonna solve this problem right here. All right, so the first order conditions for this are just, uh, when, I, when I solve this, you would have, um, you need to be on the budget line. And then you wanna set the marginal rate of substitution equal to uh, the slope of the budget line. So right here, the red indifference curve, right, <laughs> has a slope to measure with the marginal rate of substitution. And the slope of the budget line is just uh, Px over Py, four over two. Marginal rate of substitution in this case is just Y over X. So that comes from that utility function that was given. So you can calculate that. So if I take two, I have y over x equals two, right? Four divided by two, or y equals two x. And then I'm just gonna set that into equation one. So I have four x plus two y, and y is two x, it says, equals 185.95. Two times two is four, four plus four is eight, so 185.95, and then I can solve this. <coughs> divide by, excuse me, divide by eight. So 185.95, divided by eight. 23.24. And y is going to be two times that, it says. So times two. So 46.48. All right, this means my consumption. All right, so that would be the consumption basket I picked. Uh, to maximize my utility. So let's put all this together. You can actually make it quite a nice graph here. or sort of illustrate what's going on in one graph uh, where I have production um, and I have the consumption. All right, and so as a benchmark, we kind of work off this picture here. Picture. Uh, let me just get all this. Here it is. Uh, so these were the pictures we had earlier, right? I'll make them invisible to you in a minute. But we had, uh, here was closed. Here was closed. Um, here was open production. Um, I'm not going to put closed in the picture, but we'll sort of use this as a, a benchmark to kind of see how we're comparing. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture now um, where I have the production and the consumption sort of all in one graph, just to kind of I think help illustrate how it comes together. All right, so one big picture here. Try to be a little bit accurate. So same PPF, 54.8. Just make sure all these numbers uh, make sense as I start <laughs> plotting them out. My production decision was at 44.7. So I'm gonna plot that first. So I'm gonna do this right here. Um, the production of X and the production of Y. So that was the way out here.
um, where this was XP is 44.7, and then YP, my revenue maximizing was 3.57. All right, and then we um, maximize that by getting on that highest ISO cost, ISO revenue line, sorry. That ISO revenue line, right, this equation is just the same as this budget line that we're using here, right? So if you look at the budget line, when we're doing a consumption problem, we have 4x plus 2y is about equal revenue. Uh, it's the same thing as this, right? So I can draw that in, and that becomes the ISO revenue line that the producers are facing, and simultaneously it becomes the budget constraint that uh, we folded into the consumption problem. So I'm going to graph that again with the blue line. So you have something like this. This. And you have that nice tangency right there. Okay. Um, this is 4x plus 2y equals 185.95. All right, so that's what we produced. That created this budget line, so ISO revenue or budget line, that then we picked a consumption basket on. So when I say I have to pick a, um, a basket that's affordable, I'm restricted to picking a point on that blue line, All right? And so what I picked is this point here, so 2346. So 23 is sort of like halfway here. So this is XC 23.24. And then the Y consumption is 46.48. It's way over the 15.3. So you just pick some point like this, where this right here is YC equals 46.48. So that's my consumption decision on the budget line. And so the indifference curve then is going to look like this. All right, so you have that tangency right there. So at this point here, um, marginal rate of substitution to the slope of the budget line, uh, slope of the difference curve, sorry, is equal to the slope of the budget line, so Px over Py. Whereas right here, we equated the slope of the ISO revenue line, Px over Py, with the rate product transformation, the slope of the PPF. Uh, the point of this here, as I promised, is the gains from trade is that by specializing, not specializing, by participating in the international markets, uh, we can generate a revenue that then affords us to be able to pick a point on a budget line at an indifference curve that is above the PPF. Just to sort of drive that home, if you go back to the closed economy solution, this is what we had um, right here, right? We had to consume a point on the PPF. So we had 38.15. So 38.15 is right about, oh, wait, this isn't 15.3. What about 15.3 here? I have 21.9 20, here, 54.8. I'm just unclear on why I have those different numbers. So let me see which one's right. So this shouldn't screw anything up, but let's solve for that y intercept. So that's a zero, I'm solving for y. I don't know why I have these two numbers. So if I take 12,000, divided by 25, you get that, and then I take the square root of that. So it's 21.9. So this should be 21.9 right there. So that was wrong. I don't know why I had, I don't know where this came from. It doesn't really change anything because we weren't messing around with that, but this should be 21.9 here. All right, so back on track, closed economy. Um, this is our point, 38.15. So if I plot that, that's gonna be right about here. Right? That is somewhere between 23 and 44. So in the closed economy, we had 38.7x, and this was 15.3. And you can see the difference curve there is gonna be below this one, right? So if I put that in, just for comparison, you have something like this. All right, so you're on a lower indifference curve when you're restricted to picking that point on the PPF. So when I move in, in this direction from here to here, right, my utility goes up. Uh, you can confirm that, right? If you take the utility of this basket right here, uh, the utility should just be X times Y. So it would be 23.24 times 46.48. So if I put that in the calculator, you have 23.24 times 46.48, which is 1080. All right, so the indifference curve here corresponds to X, Y pair that give me a utility of 1080, whereas in the closed economy, we were at the 592, so a low utility. Last thing I want to mention is that you can do look at exports and imports, give this some sort of uh, international trade flavor. Um, exports and imports. <laughs> what is the country exporting? So in this case, here's the way to think about it. If I produce 44 units of X and I consume 23.24, then anytime the production is more than the consumption, I'm exporting the difference, right? So you could say your X exports would be XP minus XC, which are positive. So I'm exporting good X 
Uh, the idea is maybe it has some sort of advantage in producing it, maybe over other countries. At the international prices, it sort of specialized mostly in producing good acts. So it gives me revenue. And what am I importing? <laughs> we'll get the Y here. I'm producing 3.57 units of Y. I'm not good at it. Uh, but then I turn around the international markets and I buy 46. So I'm, I'm importing uh, YC minus YP, which is positive. So I'm a net importer of good Y, net exporter of good X. Um, and clearly you get the gains from trade, right? Because I'm on the higher uh, indifference curve. All right, so you change the prices. The prices are a little arbitrary at this point, right? But if you change the prices, you just have to readjust production and consumption decision. Um, all right, so what I'll do is stop there. I'll put some homework questions together and then you guys can give this a go.